<laughs> Nissan, good job. Keep making this motor and put this thing in the Z. I know oh, it will be slower yeah. than the Turbo 6. Just do it anyways. Yeah. Welcome to Texas Truck Channel. I'm Brian. I'm Craig. And we've been chasing rain all day today, so we're going to film this super fast and hope it doesn't rain on us. And right now, we are blessed with the presence of the 2023 Nissan Armada, which I know looks and probably feels about 10 years old. But I'm here to tell you, there's a gem hiding here, and it's worth your time. First of all, this is a platinum trim, which means it's loaded out to the max. And sorry for the wind here. It's right at $73,000, which is way, way less than its counterparts. So you get a loaded out Tahoe, you're touching 90. Expedition, same thing. Yukon Denali, a little more. Escalade, someone asked me the other day and said, man, why would you get this when you get an Escalade? Because this is $40,000 less. That's why you would get this over an Escalade, sometimes 50, depending on spec. But let's bring it around. The nose, this is a tried and true look, and Nissan has gone around and updated all of its fleet, even though there's an old chassis under everything. I think it looks handsome. They've got the styling down on all of them. Pathfinder, Frontier, this. In fact, the only thing I think that's not updated is the Titan, right? Uh, Since the refresh? A, a, refresh, a refresh, a refresh, yeah. But even the Z is an older platform, but it looks sharp and fresh. They put a lot of money into design. This, I think, looks very handsome. It's hard to offend a lot of people. And good headlight package, LEDs around. And my favorite part, Craig, a detached fog light. I miss this. A lot of cars are going away from that, and I really enjoy it still. Aesthetically, you've got a side vent here, which based off the heat feels like it is functional. That is nice and appealing. Bring it down here. Something that's very bespoke is this giant wheel. It's a 22 inch wheel. And wow. I didn't realize this until day three when I looked at it because it rides so dang good. You would think this is a 20, maybe an 18 at, at certain times. It makes you really wonder if it is. 275, 50, 22. It's a Bridgestone Dueler HT. We've driven this tire a lot before. It's actually a really good highway tire, really quiet, good grip in the rain. I don't think it's going to be a good snow or mud tire by any means, but it's quiet and luxurious, nothing to complain about, and pretty good on mileage too. It's not, it doesn't have a lot of drag going on. Bring it on the side, Craig. Point of contention with my wife in particular. She does not like the chrome caps on the mirrors. What? But, That's how you fix your hairs. Well, yeah, I explained that to her. She said there's better mirrors for that apparently. Huh. Yeah, it gets a little bubbly. Um, you can get a midnight edition of this, which is just a little bit cheaper actually with the same kind of features. You still get 22s, but all this is blacked out. Worth considering if that's an issue for you, so keep that in mind. Up top, you've got a real metal roof rack. This yes. is not some plastic joke bar. It actually serves about here 100 pounds of weight per bar, and that's in motion. So that doesn't mean static. That means you could probably throw a tent on this. Might do a better crossbar if you want to do maybe an additional crossbar to hold that, but that's actually a real roof rail. Sidestep, check this thing out. You can tell it works because it's holding mud. That's what that means. Also, one of the things I like about it is its gap is not so far out that it busts your shin every time. You can step over it for taller drivers. And it's also not so low that it's gonna hurt you off-road tremendously. But it's still good enough that shorter drivers will appreciate it. So it's enough you step, you don't slip off of it. Exactly, yeah. it's a real step, but it's not in the way I really like that. Because I step over these most of the time and my wife wants these. And so it's actually a really perfect design. I, one of the best we've ever used in a static plate. I like that a lot. Next thing we need to talk about, fuel door. Craig, any guesses? Uh, mm, yeah, unfortunately it's Nissan. I know it's not going to be capless. Yeah, it's not capless. Yeah. You're right. It is a metal door, and it says premium fuel is recommended, recommende, for maximum performance. You do have a fuel cap, which is okay. Feels a little bit like an Xterra here, but that's okay. So, Brian, good question on this one. Nationally aspirated V8, and every other V8 uh, model that Nissan makes with this same engine, uh -huh. you don't need premium. Do you uh -huh. need to put premium in this? For 400 horsepower and 470 foot-pounds of torque, you do need to put 91 in it. Yes. Will you hurt the car if you don't? Absolutely not. Okay. It will not harm a thing. You'll just make a little bit less power. That's why it says recommended, not mandated. Exactly. Know that. That's the biggest difference. Some cars do require it, but anything made after about 2012, mostly, will account for that. You could put 80 octane in this thing if you had to, and it would ping a little bit, and it would be super slow, and it would get where it needed to go safely. Kind of a traditional look. I do want to talk about the back porch. Look how yeah, yeah, far yeah. that is out. It's an Armada tradition. Yeah, it's an Armada thing. Weird. Um, come on down. We do have exhaust tips somewhere, but they are not exposed. The whole point about this is that they are not in the way for off-roading. Towing, this pops right off, and you've got a real man's tow hitch right here. You've got big exposed hoop hooks. you can tow real things with this. Exactly. Seven-way right here, and I don't see a four-way 
at all. I guess it's seven way only. It's That's, only for manly towing. I guess so. So if you have a you know reasonable, you know, non trailer brake trailer, you have to put an adapter in there for that. So that's kind or of silly. Be a man and get a bigger trailer. <laughs> okay, I'll get trailer brakes. Um, the point being is you can tow 8,500 pounds of this thing, and when you're not doing it, you pop this right back in, and it looks nice doing so. Brian, what's this back here? I can't see. Oh yeah, that, that, yeah, that's a compressor. That's what that is. Every single Armada from the S all the way to the Platinum comes with self-leveling rear suspension. It's actually air ride in the rear. Maybe that's why it rides so well. I don't know. It rides good front and rear though. So when you load that hitch up with say up to 850 pounds of tongue weight, this thing will be perfectly level going down the road. I like that's that awesome. Lot. That's really awesome. Let's check out under the hood. All right, boys and girls, you ready for the greatness? Mm. Me too. Oh, oh, it's got dampers. Okay, I thought it was just a heavy hood. We'll just soak it in guys. I know it's a plastic cover, but hiding under here is a dual overhead cam, 32 valve, happy to rev, happy to torque V8. In fact, this is one of my favorite V8s on sale today. Um, and look, the Coyote V8 from Ford is incredible. I'm not knocking on that, but this thing seems somehow a little bit more refined. It seems a little smoother in how it gets there. If you've ever spent time with a VQ V6, I know some people hate the way they sound, but like a VQ Frontier or Xterra delivers power really linear and really smooth doing it. And this does the same thing. So if you want a V8 today, this might be one of your last options. You can't get an exhibition this way. You can still get a Tahoe, a Yukon, all those guys, and they've got some good power options too, but this is more refined in the way that it does it. All right, Brian's trying to check out the interior of the Nissan Armada, and it is massive, like an armada of ships coming at you. First off, let's open the, the slowest opening door on the planet, but um, it is auto, and it does eventually okay, open. Okay, all right. Brian, uh, very interesting design here. You've got the uh, struts, and then you've got this, the, this is the power oh, there's operator. Only, there's not one over there's there. There's only one over there. It's not one over oh, here. so this rod is the motor then. Okay. Right, which is, might be why it's so slow. Who knows? A little look, we got the third row up. You still actually have some storage back here. That's you quite could a put bit. some luggage, yeah. not a whole lot of luggage. You could maybe move these forward a little bit and get a little bit more space, but then that person's not gonna be real comfortable. Speaking of that though, hit the button. Now you've got gobs of space, plenty of room, and we're gonna get back to in a minute and show you how much space you actually got in the third row. It's actually not bad. So pretty good. Let's raise these and uh, by the time that's, we get to the back, they'll be up. Checking out the second row before we get to the third row, I want to talk about the door here. Brian, this is a comfortable quilted door because this is a platinum. I love this brown interior with the gray. I think it's a great combo. It looks good. This got this gray, whatever wood here finish looks nice. Um, and then you, it's a, it's a comfortable door and plenty of room for a big uh, hydro flask or anything else you want to do. Now, to get to the back. How do you do that? It's kind of hard. It is a problem if you have, uh, like I did earlier, I had my nephews and I had uh, children's or child seats in both of these. Now how do you get the third row? You have to take the child seat out. Kind of a problem. Oh, that's, that's the problem that the center console creates. Does that come out? It does not. But oh, okay. what you can do when you don't have child seats here, you just pull this one little lever, hit the button and boom, one move. Look how easy wow. that is. There's nothing, uh, it's, it's just manual and it just works. It's spring loaded just right. Now let's get in the back, Brian. I want you to see this is actually not that bad. I'm gonna put the headrest up. Whoa, that's a tall headrest. It's a tall headrest okay. because they, they expect someone to actually sit back here. I'm gonna put this seat back down and uh, I'll pull all the way up. That's not bad. I mean, I could actually sit back here. In fact, my daughter wants to point out um, that you can actually wedge your head just right <laughs> and you fall asleep and your head doesn't bob, bob around. So it's really good if you fall asleep in a car, pretty comfortable place to sit. You get uh, AC vents back here. Brian, I want you to get back here to see if you can fit. Oh boy, get yeah. the address for me. Okay. Oh wow, you are sitting on the floor back here for sure. Uh, Sorry to Nissan for all this mud back here, but anyways. Oh, okay. Okay, well that's all right. I knew you wouldn't fit, I just wanna make you get back here. That's pretty mean. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's check out the second row, Brian. The second row Platinum model, we get this nice center console which holds drones and it also holds drinks. So if you don't want the drinks, you put that down, but we want drinks. So holds holds any cup or milk you want to spill for your kid, great. <clears throat> also, plenty of storage. Look at this bin down here. We've got, actually, we got a lot of stuff here. We got headphones for that, Brian. Mm -hmm. You actually get a TV screen here with an app that you can control it from. 
plug in your headphones, not annoy the parents. It's and you're the, you've got USB and HDMI on that screen, but not over here. You've got a headphone jack. Which means you, I bet you could plug your Xbox in, I'm just saying. Okay, that's what matters. So, uh, but anyways, Brian, sitting back here, you get, look, you do get heated seats, and you also get uh, triple zone climate control. They can control everything back here. That's nice, really annoy the parents. But very interesting, Brian, look at this. You want to really annoy the parents? This is the best thing you do. They're, they're, they got their cell phone up there. They got their water. Who knows? They got their water sitting right there. Hit this button as a kid to really get them going. Oh, Sorry, mom and dad. And that um, goes right into the front console. Goes into the front console. It's the same console. It's not anything different. Pretty interesting choice there. But Brian, let's just ah. sit back here and let's see how comfortable it is. You can recline it. You can put it in the spot you want. I can't control it forward or aft though. So that's really interesting. I have plenty of headroom back here and AC vents. This is pretty comfortable, Brian. I want to know if you fit. I think we got this one covered. Oh yeah, we're good back here. And I can recline it. Get comfy back here. Watch my TV, watch some Texas Truck Channel while we're driving. Good to go. Plenty of headroom, and that's also because there's not a pano on this thing. It's a yes. normal sunroof, which I prefer. Less wind noise, less MVH problems, and more headroom for the rear seat. All right, Brian, moving on to the front. I want to show off this door first. It has plenty of room for, I've got over here, Bibles and munchies. That's all so, you need. That's all you need. Let's go ahead and get in. <clears throat> On my door, I actually have my memory seats. Uh, I got only two memory seat positions. Interesting, because most cars these days have three. I have auto up and down windows on all four, as it all should be. And then, of course, I can fold my mirrors in and out, which is very nice. I like the quilted leather on the door. I think that looks really good. And this, again, the nice interior continues up here. But, Brian, I want to move my seat all the way back, because this is kind of close. So yep. I'm going to move it back. Oh. And it this is. is it. Okay. But you know what, Brian? I'm sitting really high because this dash is like, you're sitting really tall. So I'm going to lower the seat. Hmm. It's lowered. Okay. This is All as right. low and as far back as it goes, which is one of the reasons you get so much from the second row, but makes an awkward driving position up here, which we're going to talk a lot more on the drive, but it just makes it a little awkward, not unbearable, but awkward. Now, Brian, let's continue to start over there with your nice, uh, whatever wood grain that is and come over here. Brian, in 2021, they fixed the center stack from the weird awful goofy looking infotainment and it works now it has apple carplay let's just start it up and look at that um everything works and it's pretty easy to use so it doesn't go all the way to the side you always have this weather thing here you can change it to different weather things or nav or a clock clock's weird because you always have a clock there so why would you do that it could be radio stuff too but the apple carplay does work and that's nice so we're happy about that um and that's look that's all you really need and that's nice what i do love brian is you get a volume and tuning knob as you should it's easy to use they're not too tiny they're very nice um, and, and a hard key for day and night mode which is really appreciated very appreciated because sometimes this is too bright and so many times it doesn't sync with the other one you just hit that button and you put it down where you want that's very nice and a feature that needs to be in more cars yeah. nissan is doing that right in other cars as well hvac controls in the center and they're in a good spot they work right here everything's simple and it makes sense it's not buried in the menu that's very nice. And look, these vents, you can put them in just the right spot. Man, it is really nice. Moving on down, it looks like there's nothing there. Look, I like how I blocked Brian there. Um, clean, sleek, but we need to charge phones. Come on, what are we doing? Oh, wait, there's already a phone in here. Wait, wait, wait. I know it's in here. <laughs> I got his wallet. All right, so <laughs> we got uh, this phone charger, Brian. I want to point something out. You don't ever shut this. You know why? Why? Because this is like a little easy bake oven because that <laughs> charger works. Yeah, by the way, this is the only wireless charger that I've driven all year that works until the phone overheats because there's so much juice going through it. Not only does it work, it actually charges with real charging ability. Yes, it actually charges it and it charges quick and fast, which means it gets hot. Moving on down here, you get USB-C, USB-A. That lets you know your charger's working. You get a brake integrated brake controller, which is really cool and nice in a model like this. And of course, an old school charger if you need that. Down here, Brian, this is probably the most biggest bone of contention we have. Mm -hmm. And Brian, do you want to explain what that is? Yeah, so that's your off-road uh, controller, basically your transfer case controller here. But in other countries, mainly Australia, this center dial has four other buttons, and it's about drive modes. Rock. Rock, rock and mud and, and mud. sand. Yes. This, this has no drive modes in it. You have four auto, four high, and four low. And look, I wish you had a two-wheel drive option for burnouts, but that's not what this thing's about. It doesn't matter. Um, no complaints with that. I am annoyed that there's no locker option that you can get in other countries, and there is no drive mode selects. And we're about to do a hill test with this after we film this segment, and we'll see if this thing can handle its own or not. Moving on to the center stack, Brian. You know what those are? Gauges. Real gauges and a real V8. That is what we need. 
Everything else works great on here, the cruise control. You can turn the safety stuff on and off. That's nice. Okay, um, well, look, let's just go drive this thing. That's what matters. Yeah, there's not any more else to talk about. We need to drive it. We want to hear that V8 rip. That's what we want. Alrighty, Brian, we've got an armada of vehicle with us. It is time to launch it, see what 400 horsepower and actually the aspirated V8 gets us. VK56. There we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's got a long gear. Oh, yes, nice listen to that. Though. 50, yes. 55, and 60. Oh. And 6.59 seconds of freaking chaos in the best way possible. Three tons moving that quick and sounding that great. Yep. Yes. With like a 290 <laughs> gear. I mean, it's like the longest yes. first gear you've ever heard. What a good engine. Oh, it's wonderful. Holy heck. Look, they've been making this since what? Forever? Yeah. The VK, the VK, or VK, whatever they call it. V, VK56. VK56. Yeah, right, right, They're right. They're making it forever. And here's the good news about that. It's kind of like the old Toyota 5.7 they used to make. It, it, it's, it's sorted. sorted. Yeah, they, right. It's, it's all over. It's sorted. Yes. It needs nothing. There's no tweaking needed. There's nothing no. goofy about it. Look, this thing is like kind of the outlier that the Hemi used to be. Right. Except way better. I. I, we're gonna I, make some people mad. I know. But I agree. Way better. I, 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 sorry, that's not fair to the Hemi. It's way better than the LS options as well. I'll totally agree. This thing is super refined, super smooth. The seven speed is just in the right gear all the time. I wish the final drive was shorter to be a bit of a monkey, but dude, this thing's a ripper. <sighs> I love it. VK swap the world. Forget your LSs, forget your coyotes. Don't sleep on this engine. It's awesome. All right, no. all that out of the way. Seat position horrendous absolutely terrible abysmal so, i mean it's short it's tall right and it's too close to the dash and i'm gonna argue, all those things i've said this 10 times on the show and a million times to you this is a choice by the manufacturer to not consider a range outside of five nine well uh, it's just uh, a choice there's plenty of room but in even here for those people i'm trying to figure out you're so high up like, who needs an armrest that low yeah, i can't reach if the you're armrest. gonna put the seat that high then i want an armrest higher give me a right. little captain's chair things just, or Interior engineers simply put more stroke or range I, in the, in the cycle of, of the seat height. I do wonder if the lower trim spec without the uh, crotch we'll, chillers, would you, would you get some more travel there? I wonder. If you own one, comment, let us know. Yes. I, I, we're going to have to go find I'm actually curious I'm going to find yeah. out. The seat track is simply not long enough. There's no. a ton of rear leg room. If you're in the middle row, the driver's not, he's losing it to make it work there. Right. Uh, having said that, though, Brian, as yeah. much as I don't like this seat, I like right. it so bad that I would almost try to find an aftermarket seat if I bought this. <laughs> That's how bad it is. Yeah, put some Recaros in here. I like driving and riding around in this it seat. Is, I do it, get, I'm comfortable enough. Yeah, you know, uh, same. <laughs> I would still not not buy it because of this. Right. In fact, I've talked to my wife about like, look, these things are secondhand. They don't hold their value over time. Or, or you get the old one that hasn't changed since it was out in 15. Right. It, it's just such a compelling option. Yeah. The motor is great, and I had so much fun driving this thing. Ah, it's just you're, you do get the commanding seating position because you, you are do. so high up. You well, don't have a choice you, there. And you do still have headroom. Right. Well, you haven't yes, lost headroom. You do. Yeah. Um, so I can't claim with that. But it's like really quiet on the highway. Yep. The, the powertrain we talked about is already really good. Right. There's something so charming about a traditional three box SUV, body on frame. Naturally aspirated. Naturally aspirated. No turbo nonsense, no, no. pulling timing no. nonsense. It just is, cons you can rip this thing with consistently. A, with a decent transmission. And it sounds like heaven. It's just. It never shifts funny. It never shifts funny. It never shifts quick, out. There's but no it's just Ford fun. 10 speed nonsense. No. Right? And there's yeah. no turbo anything bullshit. It's a really good, engaging thing to drive around. I like it a lot. I think, once again, thanks for watching Texas Truck Channel. We'll see you next time. Got the long gear, hear that? It is.